Hi, I'm Talia with Akamai. Recently, one of our customers wanted to maximize their transcoding stream per VM to have a better cost to performance ratio while also deploying their transcoded videos to users to provide low latency content. However, as their user base grew and their content distribution scaled globally, the escalating costs started to become an issue. This customer needed to find a more cost-effective solution without sacrificing performance or user experience. This led to a thorough re-evaluation of their video transcoding and content distribution strategy. With Akamai, you get a much better cost-to-performance ratio. Also, we have lower instance costs for our VMs, and as an added bonus, there's no egress fee when you use Akamai Compute for transcoding and then distribute with the Akamai CDN. This is the solution we implemented for them to migrate their transcoding solutions from AWS to Akamai. First, you upload the videos to a bucket in Linode Object Storage, which is designed to handle incoming content. This bucket acts as a repository for raw videos awaiting processing. Here, metadata associated with each video, such as title, description, and timestamps, may also be stored alongside the original video files. Once the raw videos are uploaded to the Linode bucket, the transcoding VMs will detect a new video and the transcoding software will be triggered. During this transcoding process, the raw video files get converted into various formats and resolutions optimized for different devices and bandwidths. This is where the power of video transcoding on Linode comes into play. The dedicated Linode VMs leverage parallel processing capabilities to efficiently handle multiple transcoding tasks simultaneously, ensuring timely processing of the incoming videos. As the transcoding software processes the raw videos, the transcoded outputs are generated and stored into an output Linode bucket or in the same bucket in a different folder. These transcoded videos are now ready for delivery to end users, having been transformed into formats compatible with a wide range of devices and streaming platforms. And as a bonus, Linode's object storage ensures high availability and durability of the transcoded videos with redundancy and data integrity mechanisms in place to safeguard against data loss. This is how we architected the solution for this customer. Let's use Akamai to implement this and transcode a video from MP4 to HLS. Now, there's two major prerequisites that you're gonna need for this tutorial. First up, you're gonna need a Linode account. And if you don't already have one, check the link in the description to get some free credits to get started. Second, you need a Capella license. Capella is a trusted partner providing the transcoding software that we're gonna be using today. We've arranged for our viewers to get a free license. Just email sales at capellasystems.net and mention that you watched this video. Once you've sorted out these prerequisites, we can get started in the Cloud Manager. You can also follow along step-by-step -step in the written tutorial that's linked in the description. So let's dive in and streamline your video transcoding process. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create a Kubernetes cluster that's going to do the transcoding. So from the Akamai Cloud dashboard, click on Kubernetes on the left and then click on Create Cluster. We're going to call this Transcoding Demo. We're going to select a region. I always select Los Angeles because I'm in Los Angeles and you want to choose a region that's closest to you. Um, and then we're gonna add three nodes and we're gonna add the um, dedicated eight gigabyte nodes. And these are gonna be our management nodes. So one of these nodes is automatically elected the leader and the other two nodes are for manager redundancy. So we're gonna add, um, click on this add button for three. And I, I also want um, high availability. So I'm gonna click on yes here. And then I'm gonna click on create cluster. And this is gonna take a few minutes, but once this is done, you're gonna see in your Kubernetes dashboard, you'll see this transcoding demo that we just created with our three nodes, and they will have the status of running. So now we're gonna download our cube config file by clicking on this button here, transcoding demo cube config.yaml. That's gonna download this to our local machine. And you're going to want to move this file to your Kubernetes directory, which is the same place you have your kubectl set. Next, we're going to open our Kubernetes dashboard by clicking on this button up here that says Kubernetes dashboard. 
and this is what you're going to see. So if we click on cluster, we can see the three nodes that we just created. So now we need to create and edit our Helm configuration file. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use the Capella cluster configuration files archive and you are going to get this from the Capella team when you email them to get a license. So when you email sales at capellasystems.net, they're going to send you this file and we just have to edit a few things that are in that file. So in our Helm configuration file, we're going to update two fields, the Capella license key, which is right here. And again, this is what they're going to send you. And then the Linode API token. And this is from the cloud manager. Next, we need to install the Cambria cluster. We do that with this command. So you'll run this and you'll install the Cambria cluster. Now, I already have this installed, so it gave me an error, but I'm going to go back to my Kubernetes dashboard and I'm going to click on services. Now, we can see up here that there's three external endpoints. So this one, port 8161, I'm going to copy this because this port is specific to the web UI. So let's click on this button next to it. And then I'm going to add in front of this URL, I'm going to add HTTPS colon slash slash and it logged me in. And if you need these login credentials, again, Capella is gonna send them to you, but I'll show you where to find them. Um, if you go again to this configuration file, you'll see here Cambria Cluster Web UI User. This is the username and the password. Um, they'll send you uh, username and passwords for your file. So just make sure that these are the two values that you're gonna enter into if, if it asks you to log in. Okay, so this is the job list and I'm going to see everything that I've basically run. This is the web UI for the Cambria cluster. So recall that we are converting an MP4 video into an HLS format. So what we're going to do is we're going to have um, in object storage. So if we go back to um, our Linode object storage, what we're going to do is we're going to have this bucket. We're going to call it Capella. In this Capella bucket, we're going to have two folders one for source and one for output. So the input for our MP4 file, that's the source folder. And then the output for the HLS file, that's gonna be um, output. Go ahead and create these two folders. One's, for, one's called source and one is called output. You do that by creating, clicking on create folder here. Okay, so once you've created these buckets, we're gonna copy its location and paste it later into the XML file. So click on the details button of the bucket and then click on the copy button next to its location and save this in a notepad because we're gonna need it later. Next, we need to create access keys for the bucket. And we do that up here by clicking access keys and then create access key. You can see I already have mine but you create your access key here. We're gonna call this Capella Access and then create access keys. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna see a little pop-up once you click on create access key, it's gonna display your access key and your secret key. So these two keys, you're gonna copy and paste these to a notepad because you're gonna need them later. And once you have, um, once you've saved them, click on the button that says, I have saved my secret key. Um, You'll see this pop up once you click on create access key. Okay, so we have our input and output folders. Now we're gonna take our sample HLS document. So I'm gonna also post um, a link in the description to download this sample file. And then you can open it with your favorite text editor. Just be sure to save it in your Kubernetes folder. So here is our XML file. And again, we need to update a few Thing. So the first thing is in lines eight and nine, we're going to update the AWS access key ID and the AWS secret access key ID. These are the values that we just copied from the access keys in our bucket. So go ahead and paste those here in lines eight and nine. And then you're going to scroll all the way down to lines 234 and 235 and put the same values there. Then we're going to go to line 231 and we're going to enter the region of our bucket. So for me, it's LAX. If you did something else, if you chose a different region, it's gonna be different, but make sure you paste the region here that you should have copied. 
Next, in the upload settings section, we need to update the bucket and the location fields. So in line 227 here, update the bucket fields to be Capella because that's the name of our bucket. And then the location of our output is the output folder that's in the Capella bucket, right? So we need to update lines 227 and lines 228. Okay, now we get to the fun part because all the setup is already done. So what you need to do now is upload an MP4 file to the input bucket. So I'm gonna use an MP4 file called Flying5. So I'm gonna go to my uh, bucket here and in the source bucket here, I'm gonna upload this flying5.mp4 file and then back to the XML file. So once this is done uploading, this might take a few minutes. I'm gonna go back to the XML file and I'm gonna add the location of the source file of that MP4 file to line 347. So all the way at the bottom, this is the location of that file. Now we're ready to do some transcoding. So we're gonna run the transcoding job using an API call and you'll need to replace a few things in the curl command below. So First, you're gonna to navigate to your Kubernetes dashboard and get the IP address from the first node. So this is from node 8650. So it's this IP address up here. So for me, it's 172-235-47-48. Um, for you, it'll be something different, but make sure it's the one that's for port 8650. And it's because this port is specific to, to do the encoder job communication. Um, copy and paste this to your clipboard and save save it and it's basically just everything before .ip. You're going to need that value in a minute. And then from your Capella Cambria config.yaml file, you're going to copy the Cambria cluster API token and save it. So that's this value right here and we're going to save this. So in, in the curl command that we're gonna run, you're gonna replace the user token value with your API token. And then you're gonna add also the name of the transcoding job, XML file. So I saved mine as um, mp4-hls-transcoding-job.xml. Again, this is my the token that I just copied and then my IP address for port 8650. Now I'm gonna run this command. Now, just to confirm the job is running, let's navigate to um, this port 8161. And you can see that that job that I just entered is now queued. The progress is zero. It might take a second to start up. And this is a good time to just mention that whenever jobs are submitted to the Cambria Cluster Manager, they're gonna appear here in Cambria's web UI in the job list. And these jobs are gonna be distributed to the FTC encoding machines to run. So what's gonna happen is the Cambria cluster manager will automatically launch new FTC machine if there's no jobs in the queue previously. So I don't think there were any jobs in this queue previously. So I think that's why it's taking another second. Additional FTC machines are gonna be launched to handle the load if the number of jobs in the queue is high. If we go to the Akamai Linode Kubernetes summary page, there's this new machine that's being provisioned. And once the machine is provisioned, you're gonna see it under nodes in the Kubernetes dashboard and also the cluster manager web UI, which we just saw up here. Now, once available and automatically connected to the cluster, the job is gonna be distributed to the FTC machine to run. And you can use this UI to track the progress. So once the job is complete, you're gonna go back to the output folder of the Capella bucket, and you're gonna see three different things here. So you're gonna see a few folders. So one folder has the audio, one folder has the video, and then one has the metadata. There's three different video files. If you click on video, these are three different bit rates. You can play these through an HLS enabled player and this this could be some sort of plugin into your browser or a third party and so that's how you do video transcoding with Akamai and Capella we've partnered with Capella on this because they have solutions that are ready to be deployed and run on Akamai compute and they also run encoders on our platform and they deliver over the Akamai CDN they 
also have easier deployment with Kubernetes and Helm, which makes scaling much easier. So for example, in the tutorial we just did, um, the encoding machines from Capella are going to spin up automatically to scale for the number of jobs and then scale back down when the job is complete, which saves you thousands of dollars of idle compute time. Thanks for following along with this tutorial on video on demand transcoding. Now you should have a solid understanding of how to convert an MP4 file to HLS using Kubernetes and Capella. Remember, efficient video transcoding is a key factor in delivering seamless streaming experiences, especially in an enterprise setting where scalability, cost, and quality are crucial. Investing time in setting up a robust transcoding system can yield long-term financial benefits by lowering infrastructure expenses and improving your overall return on investments. So not only will you be providing a superior experience for your users, but you'll also be optimizing your resources and cutting costs. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content. Don't forget to check the links in the description for your free Linode credits and your Capella license. And if you have any questions or need further assistance, leave a comment below or reach out to our support team. I'm Talia with Akamai. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.